Annotations are a really cool and useful part of the Java language, but how can you create your own custom annotations that you can add and then use in your own code? In this video, we'll go over how to create custom annotations for classes, methods, and variables. My name's John, and I'm a lead Java software engineer. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description, so go check it out. But first, thanks to Mailgun for sponsoring this video. Mailgun is how modern companies work with email. Mailgun is easy to use, has amazing world-class support, and simple but powerful APIs that smart developers can use to reach customers at scale so their organization can grow faster. They also have a send time optimization feature that automatically finds the perfect time to send an email to each and every individual person on your list at the exact time that they're most likely to engage. You can send and track transactional and marketing messages, remove invalid email addresses from your list, or prevent fake signups from your list in the first place easily. Their team of experts can help you improve your email deliverability and also drive higher conversion rates. With its powerful email API and intuitive email marketing solutions, Mailgun works through the entire email lifecycle, from conception all the way to delivery. And it does that for more than 240 billion emails a year for companies like Wikipedia, DHL, Toast, Lyft, and Microsoft. Mailgun makes it easier than ever to build connected experiences through email. Thanks again to Mailgun for sponsoring this video. Try Mailgun today by using my link down in the description, mailgun.com slash John. Now let's get to it. So first, what exactly is an annotation? Annotations are a kind of metadata. They're supplemental information that you can put into your Java code. They don't directly affect the code that you annotate, but those annotations can be processed by something else, such as by the compiler or at runtime with some code that you write yourself. If you've been coding in Java for a while, there's probably at least a couple of annotations that you're already familiar with. One example is suppress warnings. For example, if I create some variable like this mycat variable, but I never actually use it anywhere else in my code, the code will compile just fine, but I'll get a warning that mycat is never used. Most of the time you would want to get rid of a warning like this by either using the variable somewhere or just getting rid of it completely if you don't want to use it. But if for any reason you're okay with whatever it's warning you about, you can use this suppress warnings annotation to get rid of that warning. In the parentheses here, you have to specify what kind of warning that you want to suppress. So to suppress an unused variable warning, you just pass in unused, and then you can see the warning goes away. So this is an example of an annotation. All annotations start with the at symbol followed by the name of the annotation. For some annotations, that's all you need. But for other annotations, you can pass in parameters in parentheses afterwards. And for some annotations, that's even required like it is for suppress warnings here. Later on in the video, we'll talk about how you can add your own custom parameters to your annotations as well, and how you can process them in your code. Annotations can be added to just about anything in Java. So that means classes, variables, methods, method parameters, and even other annotations. You'll always put your annotation right before the thing that you want to annotate. So for a variable like this, we'll put it right before the variable declaration. They can technically go on the same line too, that's totally fine, but most of the time you'll see them separated by a line. You're probably familiar with other built-in annotations too, but let's get right to the fun part. How do you build your own custom annotations? Let's get into that right now. Let's say that we wanted to create an annotation that would just apply to a class. So we could add it to our cat class here, just above the class declaration, and we could call it uh, very important. So this can just be used as a label, like a signal to some other class that is processing these annotations that this class is very important. Of course, this annotation doesn't exist yet, so how do we go about creating it? Well, it turns out that creating an annotation is actually very similar to creating your own class. So if we were going to create a new class called very important, we would just say public class very important. The only thing that we have to do to make this an annotation instead of a regular class is just change class to at interface. And that's it. That's technically all that you need to create your own bare bones custom annotation. However, there are a few things that you're going to want to customize about your annotation before you can actually do something with it. And ironically, to customize your annotation, you're going to be using some annotations. There are two main annotations that you're going to want to add here. The first is at target. 
target allows you to specify exactly which kind of Java element this annotation is valid to be used on. So in this case, we said that we wanted this annotation only to be used on a class. And this is where we can specify that. If you're okay with this annotation being used on any type of Java element, that's totally fine and you can leave this out. But most of the time you're going to want to specify it. To tell Java what type of element you want this annotation to be valid for, you'll pass in an element type. Since we want this annotation to be valid only on classes, we will use element type dot type. So if we go back over to our cat class, you can see that we have no errors when we apply the annotation to the class. But if we try to annotate a method with the same annotation, we get an error. And it says a very important is not applicable to method. If we did want it to be valid for methods as well, we could pass in multiple element types to this target annotation here. To do that, you just have to pass in your multiple element types as an array. So within curly brackets, you can just specify your multiple element types uh, separated by commas. So element type dot type makes it valid for classes and element type dot method will make it valid for methods as well. So if we hop back over to our cat class, we no longer have an error. And you can see over here just all the different element types we could add an annotation to. There's everything from a field to a constructor, just whatever you want. Now the next annotation that you're going to want to add to your annotation is one that's called retention. This one is a little bit more obscure and can be tough to understand at first. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're just going to want to use retention policy dot runtime. Runtime just tells Java to keep this annotation around through the actual running of your program so that other code can actually look at that annotation and use it while the program is running. And that's how we're going to be processing annotations in this tutorial. So if it confuses you at all, don't worry about it too much and just use runtime. The other two possible values you could send in here are source and class. Source means that Java will get rid of this annotation before it even starts to compile your code. So that's only used for annotations that only matter before code is even compiled, like the suppress warnings annotation. Class means that Java will keep your annotation around through compilation, but once your program actually starts up at runtime, it'll get rid of it. And then of course, runtime means that Java keeps this annotation around throughout the actual running of the program. And then we can access this annotation while the program is running using some fancy reflection code. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So now that we've created this very important custom annotation and we've applied it to our cat class, let's go back to our main method and show how we can go about processing this annotation. So we have this my cat object that is an instance of the cat class that we annotated. So what we can do is look at the class of this my cat object and then check whether that class has been marked with the very important annotation. And then we can have our code do whatever we want it to if it sees the annotation on that class. So to do that, we'll call mycat.getClass because the class is what has the annotation on it, not the object. And then we can call a method on it called isAnnotationPresent. And then we want to pass in as a parameter to this method the name of the annotation that we want to check for. So we'll pass in very important dot class. This method returns true if this class has been annotated with very important and false if not. So all we have to do is just surround this with an if. So we can say if this class has been marked with the very important annotation, we'll just print out this thing is very important. And then otherwise, if it doesn't have that very important annotation, this thing is not very important. Now, if we go ahead and run our program, because the cat class has been annotated with very important, we get this thing is very important. But if instead we had some dog, we'll call it my dog equals new dog, we'll call him Jerry. This dog class does not have that annotation. So if we run this instead, uh, checking my dog instead of my cat, we get this thing is not very important. So the whole idea here is that you can just look at an object's class and see if that class has the annotation that you're interested in. And if it does have that annotation, you can put whatever code that you want it to do here. Of course, it can be something super simple like this, 
but it can be as complicated and involved as you want it to be. And so that's what can make these annotations so powerful. But the basics of just checking for the presence of an annotation is pretty simple. Next, let's create an annotation that's intended to be used only on methods and show how you can process that. So we'll say public at interface. We'll call it run immediately. For the retention, we'll use the same retention policy as before, uh, retention policy dot runtime. But since we want this to apply only to methods, we will use a target of element type dot method. Now over in our cat class, we have a couple of methods that we could add this annotation to. Let's go ahead and add it to this uh, meow method that all it does is just print out meow, uh, but we won't add it to the eat method. What we're going to do to process this annotation over in our main method is to use reflection to literally loop through each of the methods in this class. And for each method, if we find that it's annotated with run immediately, we are going to run that method immediately right there. So back over here in our main method, in order to loop through all the methods in the class, we're going to use a plain old for loop. Now we can get all the declared methods in a class just by calling the get declared methods method on that class. This returns an array of method objects and all we have to do is just loop through them. So we can just say for each method in this class, we will check to see whether that annotation is present on that method. And that's done almost exactly the same way we checked for an annotation on the class. We can just call method dot is annotation present and then pass in the annotation that we want to check for. So here we want to check for run immediately dot class. So we said that if this annotation is present on a method, we want to run that method immediately right here. So here's how we can do that using reflection. We can actually use this method object that we have identified has this run immediately annotation, we can call the invoke method on it. And then we have to pass in as a parameter the object that we want to call that method on. So since over here in our cat class, we only have one method that is annotated with run immediately, what it should do is loop through all the methods that are in this class, which is just these two. And if it sees that it has this run immediately annotation, it should invoke that method immediately. So what we should see it do is run this meow method, but not this eat method. Okay, so it says meow, but it does not say munch. So it is immediately invoking the meow method, but not the eat method. I mentioned earlier that we were going to show how you can add your own parameters to your custom annotations. So let's do that now with this run immediately annotation. Let's say that we wanted to add a parameter for the number of times that it should run that method immediately. So for example, if we wanted it to run it three times, we could pass in times equals three. But how do we change this run immediately annotation class to be able to accept that times parameter? Well, right here in the body of our annotation class, we can just declare an int times. But one thing is a little bit unusual here. We technically have to make this a method and not a normal class field. So to do that, we have to add parentheses like this. But for all practical development purposes, this basically acts exactly like a normal field. So now we can specify this int times parameter when we use this annotation. And then back over here in our main method, where we're already processing this annotation, getting the value of that times parameter is really easy. So here inside this if, we definitely know that this method has the run immediately annotation. First, we actually have to retrieve this run immediately annotation from that method. And we can actually put that in a run immediately object. We'll just call it annotation. And we can get that annotation from the method just by calling method dot get annotation. And then we again pass in the annotation that we want to retrieve. So run immediately dot class. So now that we have this annotation object, we can just get the times parameter off of that annotation just by calling annotation dot times. We said that we wanted to use this times parameter to be the number of times that we invoke this method. So here's how you can do that. You can just put this invoke call inside a simple for loop. So we can say uh, for int i equals zero, 
and we'll keep looping while i is less than the number of times specified in the annotation parameter i plus plus put this invoke call inside the for loop and that should be it now we've specified that we wanted to run this meow method three times so hopefully when we run this program we will see it running the method three times and we do there are a few things to note about these parameters though one thing is that you can't use just any type you want for these parameters they can only be a primitive type like this int a class type a string or an array of any of those so if instead of the int type here we gave it a type of dog we get an error that dog is an invalid type for an annotation member if you do want to use an array as your parameter you just need to add brackets to the type here like this the second thing to know about these parameters is that you can add default values if you want to so it might make sense to default this times parameter to one so if you don't pass in a number of times that you want it to run the method it will only run it once to do that all you have to do is after the declaration here is just put default and then whatever you want the value to be if you don't specify any default here you're required to pass in that parameter when you use this annotation. But if you do have a default value, then it's optional and you can leave it out. Next, let's create and process a custom annotation for a field in a class. Let's say our new annotation is only intended for string fields on a class like this name. So let's go ahead and create it. So public at interface. Let's just call it important string. And again, we're going to use the same uh, retention policy of runtime. But since we want this annotation to be valid only for a field on a class, we're going to use element type dot field for the target. So now we've created this important string annotation. Let's go over to our cat class and annotate this string name field with important string. Now back over in our main method, we're going to process this annotation similarly to how we processed the method annotation. Here we can use mycat.getClass.getDeclaredFields to get all of the fields declared on that class. So we can loop through each of the declared fields in the class just like we did with methods. So for each field, we'll call it field in the declared fields in the class. We will check whether that important string annotation is present on this field. And then if it is, we can just print out the value of that string, but in all uppercase because it's so important. So at this point in the code, we know that this field does have this important string annotation. So what we need to do is get the value of this field on this object that we're interested in. And we can get the value of this field on this object by calling field.get and then passing in the object that we want to get that field from. So we'd pass in my cat. So because this could technically be any type and won't necessarily only be a string, first we have to put it into an object variable. We'll just call it object value. So because this variable is an object and not a string, to work with it as a string, we first need to safely cast it to a string. The easiest way to cast it to a string safely is to just say if this object value is an instance of string. Now in newer versions of Java, you don't even have to explicitly cast this object value to a string. Instead, all you have to do is put in the name of the variable that you want it to have for its value as a string. So let's say we put in string value here. So what this will do is check to see if this object value object is an instance of string and if it is it will automatically cast this to a string and put it in a variable called string value which we can then use inside this if pretty cool we said that for any field that has this annotation we just wanted to print out its value in all caps so we could do that pretty easily here by just saying system.out.println and then taking the string value and calling to uppercase so since our cat is named Stella this should print out Stella in all caps when we run our program so let's see and there we go Stella and yes I actually do have a cat named Stella and this is a picture of her here she's the tiniest sweetest little kitten if you enjoyed this video or learned something 
Please let me know by hitting the like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. And be sure to check out my full Java course in the link down in the description if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you being here with me. I'll see you next time.